So good afternoon. Let me just start by uh, reminding folks that our emergency order regarding non-essential businesses goes into effect basically now. The Department of Public Health has also issued a stay-at-home advisory, which we talked about yesterday. This outlines the self-isolation and social distancing protocols that everyone needs to pay very close attention to. We know that these measures that we've outlined yesterday are going to be very difficult and inconvenient for many. But our goal right now is to slow the spread of the virus by limiting opportunities for person-to-person -person contact. Taking action now to limit the spread of the virus will give our public health officials, our healthcare community, and others time and opportunity to meet the challenge ahead of us. The goal, of course, is to flatten the curve so that the number of cases doesn't overwhelm our healthcare system all at once. There's no question that these are challenging and unprecedented times, but I know the people of this great commonwealth will meet this challenge as they always have head on. As we've said before, ramping up testing capabilities is a big part of pushing back against this threat. The command center has been working hard to increase the commonwealth's ability to do that with both the state public health lab and with many other private labs and healthcare labs. We're continuing to make progress on increasing the number of tests completed, as well as our testing capacity. There have now been almost 9,000 tests completed in Massachusetts, which is up from around 6,000 on Sunday. In addition to the state public health lab and Quest Diagnostics and LabCorp, there are now 10 additional labs that are up and running. Beth Israel Deaconess, Bioreference, Children's Hospital Boston, Mayo Clinic, Partners Healthcare, Tufts Medical Center, AROOP, Viacor, and among, are, are now among the labs submitting test results to DPH. This is big progress from where we were even a week ago. I also want to remind folks that the number of tests we do in Massachusetts goes up. We will expect the number of cases, the number of positive tests to go up as well. And the command center will continue to expand testing capacity across the state. As a reminder, if you have questions about tests for yourself or your family, if you are showing signs uh, and symptoms associated with something like the flu, you should stay home and begin first by contacting your medical provider. Remember, as we've said many times, telehealth services, phone calls, video chats with a trusted provider are a, a, design, a defined benefit here in the Commonwealth of Mass. We need, you, we need to keep people that don't need to be in our hospitals and medical facilities out so that we can allow our providers to focus on the people who need the help the most. I want to share a few other quick updates from the command center. As of this morning, the Department of Public Health has made 89 deliveries of strategic national stockpile assets to healthcare facilities across the Commonwealth. DPH has received several shipments from the Strategic National Stockpile and over 750,000 masks, face shields, gowns, and pairs of gloves have been, delivered, um, have been delivered to DPH and are being distributed. MEMA began distributing personal protective equipment on Monday to at least 15 locations, including fire, police, and first responders. In response to a letter from Secretary Mary Lou Sutters last Friday, the Massachusetts dental community donated masks, hand sanitizers, and gloves. And we are very grateful that so many people are helping out in this critical effort. Similar outreach for PPE donations has gone out to the construction industry and to vocational school communities. These folks likely have more gear that we can repurpose to help our frontline medical workers. Finally, as we announced yesterday, the Department of Public Health Advisory has been posted on Mass.gov regarding stay-at-home practices. The advisory offers clear guidance to our residents on ways to reduce the spread of COVID-19 and keep their families and communities healthy. The DPH advisory reflects yesterday's announcement by strongly advising residents who are 70 years and older and those with underlying health conditions to stay at home with the exception of essential trips for food, medicine, and focus time for exercise and fresh air. Advising all residents to stay home as much as they can and avoid unnecessary activities for the next few weeks. 
urging residents to practice social distancing and safe hygiene practices throughout their daily activities. Staying at home means only leaving home to address essential needs, like going to the grocery store or the pharmacy, taking a walk for fresh air, or something similar. Everyone is encouraged to call or video chat instead of visiting friends and family. This, of course, is not easy. It's not what we're used to doing with our family and our friends, but it's hugely important, and it is one very significant way everyone can participate in stopping the spread of COVID-19, and especially in keeping loved ones safe. This order is effective as of noon Monday. More details are obviously available at mass.gov slash COVID-19. Throughout the outbreak, we've constantly reminded our residents that we all need to get our information, your information, from trusted sources. Today, we're making that easier with a new program. Today, we're announcing a new tool, Alerts Mass, uh, Alerts actually MA, in our efforts to inform the public about COVID-19, which will enable you to get up-to-date alerts about coronavirus sent right to your phone. This can be used to share news, prevention information, and help us connect residents to information they may be seeking. Residents can, test, can text COVID-MA, all one word, to 888-777 to sign up for updates. These alerts will include important information like the latest news and updates from our administration and the command center, public health tips on social and physical distancing, personal hygiene, and other ways to stay healthy, and important alerts about state services. We're not looking to bombard folks and add to the information overload many already feel. Most days, we will only push out one or two notifications. But this is a great way to stay in touch with the Commonwealth's government and to hear the latest announcement from trusted sources. It may also provide some relief from staying glued to your television all day to hear the latest headlines. I want to thank our team at the Executive Office of Technology Services and Security for working with Everbridge, a mass-based company located in Burlington, to bring this new capability to the Commonwealth and to the people of Massachusetts. We've been working hard, as many of you know, to also deal with red tape where we can to give our agencies and our cities and towns more flexibility as they respond to the virus. As a few examples, we've made it easier for nurses licensed in other states to work in Massachusetts if our hospitals need to call in more frontline health care workers. We also issued a series of new emergency orders to make it easier for medical professionals to work at neighboring hospitals. That way, if they need more people at a certain hospital like Mass General, for example, we can call over staff from other hospitals to support them. We've expanded telehealth services, as I mentioned before, so that people can call or video conference with providers instead of visiting a hospital or a provider organization. And we've issued relaxed administrative requirements so more physician's assistants can work on supporting treatment for COVID-19 patients instead of their other assignments, such as elective surgeries. A lot's been done to support our healthcare system and other functions of government. And today, we're pleased to introduce a new piece of legislation that cuts red tape for our cities and towns. As former local officials, Lieutenant Governor Polito and I understand the challenges that cities and towns deal with every day as we all battle COVID-19. Our municipalities need new tools and resources to ensure the continuity of local government and to support the needs of their residents. Our local leaders obviously are focused on ensuring the health and safety of their residents, and our goal with this new bill we're filing today is to cut down on some of the bureaucratic processes they would typically need to go through or could go through if they could actually meet physically. The Lieutenant Governor will provide some details on this bill in a minute. For the last two days, we've all been following closely the developments in Washington. The debate around the economic aid pa package in the Senate well, frankly, it's been appalling, but I can't say I'm surprised. I've watched and seen governors and mayors and other elected officials completely shift their focus to the task at hand without the slightest partisan bend. So I know it's possible, if they choose to, for D.C. to do the same. I think we all hope and try to be confident that Congress will get the job done and soon because this kind of partisan behavior is simply not an option now. 
It may take a little longer than it should, in fact it already has, for Washington to come around, but I'm hopeful and confident that they will, and that they will soon. As I said, governors, mayors, and other elected officials at the state and local level are stepping up on this. We've been very pleased that we've had a chance to talk to and engage with many of them over the course of the past several weeks. I myself have probably talked either directly or on calls with more than 40 of our nation's governors over the past 14 days. And they are all stepping up for their states and doing everything they possibly can to help their people stay safe throughout this crisis. And as we all know, these are very uncertain and challenging times, and the situation is changing and evolving constantly. We remain enormously thankful that the residents of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts have brought determination, guile, creativity, and guts to this process. And we appreciate enormously their commitment to staying home, distancing themselves from what would be otherwise traditional person-to-person -person contact, engaging in the kind of personal hygiene that's critical to keep them and their family members and friends safe, and doing all that they can to stop the spread. Residents can stay up to date on the latest information from trusted sources by visiting mass.gov slash COVID-19, calling 211 with questions, which at this point is answered and responded to thousands and thousands of inquiries. Sign up for this new text update by texting COVIDMA, one word, to, to 888-777, and get your news from reliable sources, wherever they may be. I now want to turn the podium over to Lieutenant Governor Polito, who can talk a little bit more about this municipal legislation we're filing today. Thank you. Good afternoon, and thank you, Governor Baker, and thank all of you for uh, listening in to the latest updates that we can share with you. As the governor indicated, the COVID-19 has touched every aspect of our lives. Uh, it seems like every day there are new ways that we can uh, determine how to uh, approach this, serve the people of this commonwealth better, and to uh, respond, react, and do what's necessary to keep the people of this commonwealth safe. When I think about keeping this commonwealth safe, there's no doubt in my mind or the governor's that we couldn't do this without the support and without the work with our partners at the local level. Uh, overnight, just for instance, you have communities like Brookline and Northbridge and Sutton uh, having emergency responders uh, put out uh, major fires. Uh, you have local government uh, figuring out how their workforce comes to their city or town hall or works remotely to continue to, to deliver services to the people of the community. And of course, now ramping up more efforts through their boards of health and basically mobilizing their ex uh, operation centers and teams to help us combat the COVID-19 epidemic. Uh, it's clear that we have to stick together, but stick together in a time where social distancing is becoming and is a very much a real part of our, of our lives. So it's just really a, a thank you and appreciation and uh, a, a, a great statement of value uh, to the men and women who literally wake up every day in our communities and go to work uh, to support uh, the people of our 351 cities and towns. Um, in local government, they certainly have um, some uh, basic things that they need to do, but there are rules also that they need to, to abide by. And in order for them to be more flexible, more able to uh, make decisions and respond to the needs of the people in their community. There are some things that we in the executive branch and the legislature will need to do to support them. Uh, first of all, when it comes to education, uh, we all know uh, that our schools have been um, out of in-class uh, learning uh, now for over a week. And we, at the same time, working with the department, know that we need to give 
uh, school districts more flexibility about how they can uh, work with the Student Opportunity Act. For instance, extending the April 1st deadline for the three-year plan uh, that they need to prepare is something that Commissioner Riley has asked us uh, to seek support for. Uh, thinking about the Board of Elementary and Secondary Education, uh, with the recommendation of uh, Commissioner Riley, they need to think about uh, the guidance and standards for high school graduation. Uh, we also need to work uh, with the department and the commissioner to how to modify or, or utilize or waive uh, MCAS requirements that have been such a, a major piece of the quality of the public education uh, that we offer here in the Commonwealth to uphold standards. These are some very significant and real issues that our local partners and our department are working with to sort, sort out the impact on public education here in our Commonwealth. The package also includes uh, some changes relative to municipal finance, uh, giving more flexibility to our regional school districts who are also in need of, of proposing and passing uh, budgets for the next fiscal year, but the statutorily required vote uh, that they need to take in order to process a budget, uh, giving them some flexibility about how they do that so that they still have a budget to be able to work with to deliver uh, education uh, resources as needed. When it comes to uh, our taxpayers, uh, our local taxpayers, giving them more flexibility to pay their taxes without incurring penalties. Uh, many of you know that the tax date in some municipalities is May 1st, allowing them to change that uh, date uh, to June 1st uh, is, is something that they are looking for uh, flexibility around. Think about local projects and permitting. Uh, some of these uh, matters uh, are... pending before boards. These boards can't assemble and hold hearings. So we want to make sure that working with the project proponents that they have some flexibility around uh, this area so that no permit will be automatically granted, approved, or denied because a local authority can't convene a hearing. Any permit that is currently valid uh, will not lapse or expire during this state of emergency so that it can be acted on at a time when uh, it's appropriate for that body to uh, issue it. Applications for permits will be filed electronically uh, to eliminate the in-person filing at their municipal uh, building. The suspension of any requirement that a hearing on a permit application be held within a certain period until 45 days after this state of emergency will give our local communities more flexibility around projects, permitting, and, and uh, related issues there. Uh, we've heard a lot about the frontline workers, your police, your fire, your emergency responders. Uh, also, uh, because they are always there for us, uh, being impacted by uh, the virus. And when they come offline because they need to isolate or quarantine or recover, the municipalities need a redundant workforce to be able to respond to the local calls. Uh, they've asked us to work with them so that retirees who are collecting pensions can uh, return uh, to work at the local level if we adjust salaries and wage hours that are currently limiting their ability to go and do that work. Think about law enforcement uh, and their process to uh, get a search warrant on a criminal matter. The process requires them to go physically to a courthouse for a judge or a clerk magistrate to issue a search warrant. We're requesting that that process be uh, converted to an electronic signature process. Uh, just amazing the, the, the details of how government works, but in a crisis like this, these adjustments need to be made so that it can continue to work. Uh, we've heard a lot from our local businesses, especially our restaurants. Uh, many of these restaurants that we all enjoy have had to shut their business, but those that have converted their business uh, to takeout and delivery operations have requested that we uh, allow those businesses that are uh, legally authorized uh, to offer uh, beer and wine uh, for on-consumption premises, since they won't
won't be able to do on consumption premises uh, delivery to be able to add that beer or wine in a sealed container to a takeout uh, meal or a delivery meal. So that is also included in this municipal relief package. Uh, clearly, everyone has a role to play, every single one of us, whether it's uh, maintaining your personal hygiene, helping your neighbor, returning uh, to your work because you are an essential part of helping us respond and eventually recover. Uh, we know that we will all do better when we work together, and I just want to thank everyone for uh, on the, uh, their understanding, but their diligence uh, to take this seriously and to do your part. I'd now like to